hold on to all of the information they've already collected. Now, John Bowne has a really great in-depth report talking about this, how there's some, quote, new rules for Big Brother and just kind of the, the falseness of them saying that everything's okay, all your data belongs to us, and they'll keep it perfectly safe. Let's listen to that report. The privacy you expect in emails, contacts, notes, and even location data has been easily accessible to civil law enforcement agencies like the Federal Trade Commission and the Security and Exchange Commission for decades. The Electronic Communications Privacy Act of 1986 was signed into law by President Reagan on October 21, 1986. Title I of the ECPA or ECPA was intended to protect wire, oral, and electronic communications while in transit. Title II, known as the Stored Communications Act, was intended to protect communications held in electronic storage. And Title III prohibits the use of pen register and or trap and trace devices to record dialing, routing, addressing, and signaling information used in the process of transmitting wire or electronic communications without a court order. However, the law is so ancient that government agencies have been mining it for years, and the provisions in Title II only apply to stored emails up until 180 days. After that, your emails are fair game. The cloud has also created a new treasure trove of data related to every detail of your existence. The NSA's $2 billion Utah Data Center has been gobbling up every individual's information and storing it for pre-crime, surveillance, and a blatant criminal exercise of violating every American's Fourth Amendment rights to create a culture of submission. Now. Utah Senator Mike Lee, along with Senator Patrick Leahy and Representatives Kevin Yoder and Jared Polis, are spearheading the ECPA Amendments Act. The act would require law enforcement to acquire a warrant to gain access to your private information, regardless of how old it is. And the government bureaucracies would be required to notify unsuspecting Americans that their privacy was breached by Big Brother within 10 days. Policies that should have been set up 30 years ago. Of course, Big Brother isn't going to go down that easy. Uh, five years ago, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit found the contents of email was fully protected by the Fourth Amendment, regardless of its age. And that's effectively become the rule nationwide. Major service providers no longer turn over the contents of emails or texts without a warrant or a legitimate warrant exception. The ECPA Amendments Act simply, as Senator Lee knows, we simply codify current practice. Now, some have raised concerns the bill would hamper civil regulatory agencies, such as the SEC. Well, we want these agencies to be effective. But there's nothing in our Constitution that says only certain agencies have to follow the Constitution, others don't have to. On behalf of the SEC, concerning the Electronic Communications Privacy Amendments Act, pending before your committee. I share the bill's goal of updating ECPA's evidence collection procedures and privacy protections to account for the digital age. But the bill in its current form poses significant risks to the American public by impeding the ability of the SEC and other civil law enforcement agencies to investigate and uncover financial fraud and other unlawful conduct. I firmly believe there are ways to update ECPA that offer stronger privacy protections and observe constitutional boundaries without frustrating the legitimate ends of civil law enforcement. The SEC's tripartite mission is to protect investors, maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and facilitate capital formation. Our Division of Enforcement furthers this mission by investigating potential violations to the federal securities laws, recommending that the Commission bring actions against alleged fraudsters and other wrongdoers, and litigating the SEC's enforcement actions. A strong enforcement program is critical to the SEC's efforts to protect investors from fraudulent schemes and promotes investor trust and confidence in the integrity of our securities market. The New World Order detests our God-given liberty. Consequently, they also have no regard for law and order. And in the face of a nation increasingly craving liberty, Congress's assumed access to our private lives should be revoked as it is clearly violating our Bill of Rights. John Bound for Infowars.com. All right, well, there you go. They're from the government and they are here to help. And now we've got to worry about our religious sectors as well. 
uh, because this month the UN is going to be launching their blueprint for a new world order with the help of the Pope. Now, as everyone is fawning over his holy arrival, you know, let's point out how one of the number one search terms on Google was, is the Pope the Antichrist? Which is kind of funny because several years ago, that was also one of the main trending Google searches, is Obama the Antichrist? So kind of funny there. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about this 2030 agenda. There's pretty much been a total media blackout of this. Now, this is uh, coming off of Zero Hedge, submitted by Michael Snyder. He did this reporting. Um, but the Sustainable Development Summit is going to be held from September 25th to the 27th. And some people are calling this Agenda 21 on steroids. And this the Sustainable Development is, is going to transform our world for the better by 2030. So that's just 15 years. So you can really see how they're ramping this whole agenda up into overdrive. Uh, but this is not just about the environment. It also includes plans regarding economics, agriculture, education, and gender equality. Ah, so that would explain some of those controversial White House guests. Now, this this entire planet is going to be committing to working toward 17 sustainable development goals and 169 specific sustainable development targets. So this is pretty important and it's being rolled out this week and yet no one is talking about it. They're of course talking about uh, you know the Pope and, and how exciting this is and those controversial White House guests and what that means for Catholicism and everything like that and how wonderful it is that the Pope is going to be leveraging his his moral high ground to help push the president's agenda but they're not going to openly call this a new world order now obviously fundamentally changing the economic development of the world that's that's exactly what this is, is a new world order and in the past this always happens we have a technocratic elite who promise us a utopia and what what happens is that it quickly uh, degenerates into extreme forms of tyranny so this is obviously something we're going to be reporting on a lot more in depth obviously tonight on the nightly news as well as in the the days rolling out uh, but this is pretty big news, and and obviously that's why there's also a total media blackout in the mainstream media. Now another thing, let's kind of switch gears here. Something we've been kind of reporting on all week because it was so shocking: the fact that they are openly now peddling pedophilia. And you know, for myself, it was just so extreme. Yeah, there should be some other resources for people out there who have mental disorders to go figure out how they can help themselves rather than just these seedy, dark internet forums. So I get that. I get where this person might be coming from. But the way that the piece, the Salon.com article that's gotten everyone in a tizzy, the way it was written was, you know, feel sorry for me. I was a victim. And you know what? Pedophilia isn't that bad. And we're people too. And you should be understanding and just love us. So that was incredibly shocking, so shocking, in fact, that Alex Jones decided to channel one of these potbelly clowns and explain to you what this is really all about, how, how this is being uh, unraveled here in our society, and kind of got to the heart of the matter. Now, this is a video that you really have to watch for yourself. So if you go to infowars.com forward slash show, you can watch along with us. It, it's there with all of the articles, all the news clippings, everything, all the proof you need to see what is happening with this pushing of pedophilia. So here's that video. children welcome to the newest trendy liberal program brought to you by the liberal trendy establishment media you know who's coming out of the closet now with federal judges ruling on it and saying it's good all over the world writers for salon.com telling you it's time to love the pedophile I just said it. It's all about a sexual preference. When we grab your kid out of the back of the yard and teach them how to love. And it's all right with our preference that you belong to us. 
Just like Melissa Harris Perry said, your kids don't belong to you, they belong to the state. Part of it is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. And the people that make up a state like me. So now it's time for you to learn it's an act of domination, an act of control. And we're not just gonna sexually abuse your children. We're gonna forcibly inoculate them with deadly pathogens known to brain damage them. We're gonna rape their brains, rape their minds, and make you take care of them for decades when they're autistic, wearing diapers, crying at night. Because that's what we like to do. And you're so weak and pathetic, you'll do whatever we tell you. So now I'm coming right out. I don't have a message to the parents out there, I have a message to the children. You belong to the state and Big Pharma, and you belong to the cult of the PBP, the pot belly pedophile. We're gonna take good care of you. Let me show you where you're gonna be living now once the state takes you away. Once the state teaches you how to enjoy yourself. Come on in. You think Sandusky, you think the Catholic Church with the pedophiles is, is isolated? It's system-wide. We control this country and the world now. And your children belong to us. So mommy and daddy aren't going to be able to protect you. Just like all the big defense contractors caught shipping kids around. Who do you think they feed them to? Us. We're going to ship the narcotics into your country. We're going to take your kids. We're going to do whatever we want. We're going to sit up there on television and in print. And the new trendy group is going to be people you used to call pedophiles. Now we're upstanding citizens and your kids belong to us. You better get used to that and understand it, kids. Just like California passed a law that kids can decide to be vaccinated, even if their parents don't want All right, and that was just a portion of this video special report put out by Alex Jones. It's called Pedophiles Are People Too. You can watch it in its entirety on the Alex Jones YouTube channel. Like I said, some disturbing images in that, that, you know, you need a trigger warning, most of you kids out there in the university right now. But it's real. That's that's actually happening. And why are they peddling pedophilia now? Is it because there is some sort of satanic network happening? Is it because the upper echelons of our government are involved in this? Or 2% of Catholic priests are pedophiles, according to the Pope himself? I don't know. I don't really know what it's about, but it is some sort of a sick agenda that is happening. And we're not going to let this happen. I've got, like I said, a trigger warning myself for anybody out there that wants to touch some kids without. Ugh, I just we will be right back. All right. Welcome back. We're wrapping up the fourth hour overdrive. I am Leanne McAdoo here. And now I'm going to go ahead and take one of your phone calls. Paul in New Mexico, you've been holding for quite some time, and you wanted to talk about the Pope. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Leanne. It was nice talking to you. <clears throat> um, the Pope, you know, I just want to make a comment. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little cracked. But, um, the, Pope, uh, the Pope is the one who's blowing the real smoke um, as he pushes a global warming hoax. Not the coal plant, which is below in CO2 and water vapor. Um, we need to stop wor uh, worshiping and uh, feigning over any man. No man on a white horse is going to save this country. Only the Lord Jesus Christ on his white horse and um, his followers on their white horses will save this country. That's why, I look, sort of like Ben Carson, if he didn't have this problem with the vaccine, I, I know, I mean, he's totally wrong on that, but I like him other than that because. He is a Christian, and it's only through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we're going to ever, I mean, who is the ultimate campaign advisor? I would like to have the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal campaign advisor and my life personal, my life campaign advisor. Not any other campaign advisor, but the Lord Jesus Christ is who I would want to rely on. Um, we need to stop selectively shutting down these coal plants to... Uh, collectively blame all the coal plants they keep the they keep the the um dirty ones open to collectively scapegoat and blame the entire coal industry and shut them down well exactly so and that's i mean it's just a, this huge argument out there and it's really just to put money in the pockets of the globalists and take the power away from the people. I'm not against recycling. I'm not against taking care of the planet and all of these things. I mean, I don't want people to think I'm, you know, anti-environment here, but I'm just anti-BS. And we, I think we've 
thoroughly cut through all of that.